Hey everybody, welcome back to the Sly Patch Podcast. I'm Digital Chimera, you can call me Ashlyn. And I'm the Captain, you can call me Tyler. And it's, it's time, time to, to ready up. up. Hey, hey, it's been so long, it's, but we but we still we still got the synchronized. We're getting there. I didn't oh, get yeah. the snap that time though. Ah, that's fine. That's okay. So, as those who follow our podcast may have noticed, um, it's no longer Spencer and Tyler. Um, it is now Ashlyn and Tyler. So, today's podcast is uh, you know this is Pride Month, and we're both uh, L- LGBTQ. Um, ourselves we've talked about that kind of in the past a little bit um i'm pansexual myself um and this is our coming out episode for ashlyn um because ashlyn is actually a trans woman um so ashlyn why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell some people about it well uh this is a uh you know it's taken me a long time to kind of figure this out and i know anyone who's been watching the show for the last few months uh i know a lot of the good things i've been saying is you know um progress in therapy that i've been going to and this is a lot of the reason i was in therapy there are other reasons too like anxiety and depression but um this was one of the reasons that i started going to therapy in the first place and back in january about when we started recording is when i definitively figured out what was going on and, and you, you had come out to me and we talked about it and, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm proud of thank you you know for, for letting me be uh, one of those people that, that you trusted with that and uh, but you know one of the so, so some of the good news to tell people you know is uh, you know, the, the hardest one of the hardest things to go through you know with that transition a lot of times um, has to do with the ones that are closest to us a lot mm-hmm. of times including our family and so like like why don't you tell people about like how things have gone with your family well i'll save that for the campaign okay okay that's fair that's fair yeah let's let's do our warm-ups which yeah, my, yeah. We'll my warm-up warm my warm-up for this week is is r- very much related to all of that i um i came out publicly on facebook um last week tuesday and the response has been overwhelmingly positive, and I've just had a really, really good week. Yeah, it's just been, been good. pretty awesome. Yeah, my, my warm up this week. Uh, I'm going to so something just a little curveball that's not, you know, not on the subject, but um, something you know we, we both uh, got to uh, enjoy last mm-hmm. night, which is, and I talked about it I think in a previous episode. Uh, one of my friends, his name is Evan Machensky, and. Uh, DJ Waluigi, if you if you know about that name, uh, he hosts um, Friday night karaoke at Binary, and uh, so we've gone the past couple weeks and had a, had a tremendous time, uh, you know, singing karaoke. So, you know, that's my warm up for this week is just being excited, you know, for every week now to be able to go and and do that, and you know, not that I'm the greatest singer in the world, but I love it and I enjoy it. So it's it's so much fun if you guys. Uh, if you guys have never done karaoke, or if you have and you just like to go, whether you like to sing or don't like to sing, we could always use more people. If you just genre. like music, just, in, if you just like music in general, like, yeah, it's it's just a fun atmosphere with good people you know, around. If, if, if you enjoy music, come out because there are some fantastic singers there, um, and then there are people. As like, much as Tyler is humble, he is one of them. Eh, I'm okay. I'm all right, but thank you. Like I said, he's humble. Um, <laughs> there's some fantastic singers out there, and and then even people who you know may not consider themselves fantastic singers, there's some fantastic entertainers out there as well. That's like true. that guy in the suit last yeah. night was an absolute legend. Dude, Zach the Mac. So his his <laughs> name is Zach Zacharoni Macaroni. Yeah. You know, so but Zach the Mac last night, I mean, he wasn't a bad singer either. But at the same time, what I love... But loved, that, wasn't, that wasn't his, what I his loved, bread and butter. No, what I love, though, was his improv on the songs that he was singing. His improv and the showmanship. Yeah. Like, he was walking around the room, kicking his heels and he, stuff. He, it he was, was fantastic. It was so. just... It was yeah. so fun. Zach, if you ever see this, first of all, you did great. You, you do sing well. <laughs> but your, your, your showmanship is by far, like, the best there. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. I, I have not seen a better... 
karaoke performance to date. Yeah, yeah. Zach, Zach did amazing. Um, but yeah, anyway, it, yeah, so... It, it was a lot of fun last night. We've been going for a couple weeks, and my Friday night plans in the future are Sly Patch F&M and followed by Binary Karaoke, so that's what meet us out there. Yep, that's what we're all doing right now, so for sure. Uh, but anyway, so that's our warm-up, you know. Um, now that it's all warmed up, let's get right, you know, into that hot meal, the the meat and potatoes, as we as we talk about our, our campaign. And as we talked about, you know, this week's episode is going to be, it's going to be focused on pride in general. You know, I, I think, you know, we're going to have a lot of things to talk about, um, but especially a lot. You're going to hear Ashlyn talk a lot more than me in this episode. Um, I may ask some questions and talk about some things, and I'll talk about some things that relate to me. But I really want you to uh, to be able to express the things as someone who, again, is trans that... A lot of people may not understand, you know, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of questions that people have. I'm sure, so again, going back to like what we just talked about, like with your family, for example, you know, I'm sure that there are people in your family that had certain questions and stuff that maybe, mm -hmm. you know, didn't understand it completely. So uh, let, let's start with that is, you know, talk about, you know, how the experience with your family went. Yeah, uh, it was overall good, I would say. It Mostly from doing this, what I've observed, and this isn't just with my family, but it is more with my family than with anyone else, because most of my friends and the people who are close to me that I've chosen in life are more uh, socially alike to me and more open and accepting and it's not that my family isn't open and accepting it's just a different way of it because oh, mo a lot of them are more conservative yeah. and also some of generational them, gap you know, yeah there's generationally a there's a, a different sort of openness yeah. that comes with that so friends like really close friends that i had were like that's great i'm so happy for you is there anything i can do for you and then they'd have some questions to go along with that like how did you get to this point stuff like that whereas it was met with a little bit more confusion from family, but still overall acceptance and support. And, and I think that, you know, with, with family members, especially like parents, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of the parents, especially from the older generation, so, so you and I have a genera generational gap that we've talked about many mm -hmm. times on here. I'm 38 years old you know, versus 22 22, 22. 22 now, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just, just had a birthday not, not, not too long ago. <laughs> um, so, you know, 38 versus 22. Um, so I'm, I'm actually probably closer to your parents, you know, age range, you know, th uh, than a lot of people that are your friends. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm probably much closer to your parents' age range than, mm -hmm. than a lot of your friends are. And, uh, you know, my parents were probably actually even older than your parents, you know, so I understand those age gap, you know, type things. And, you know, for them... For them, you know, when they have a, what they believe, you know, you know, is a son that is born, you know, due to certain genitalia and things like that, but not necessarily gender, you know, and things like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and they go through a lot of the life thinking that it, it can be a hard transition. Like, it, it is a wake-up call to some people. Like, it, mm -hmm. it's literally, you know, oh, you know, I didn't understand, you know, I didn't see that coming, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's out of left field, things like that. It was, it was meant met with shock by some exactly and that's understandable it's totally understandable what's mm -hmm. fantastic and what you know we've talked about you know i want those people out there to understand and for for those who you know especially maybe those who are you know in the closet you know so to speak themselves and and, and worried about how it's going to be is like you've actually overall had a fantastic um you know acceptance yeah from your I'm, family I, I will say that i've been the most fortunate I could possibly be with the people that are around me and close to me because, you know, when I was dealing with this and first trying to figure it out, one of my worst fears was that everyone around me would see me as a different person or maybe not see me as a friend anymore or, mm. or as a family member, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, because you hear about 
other people going through that, right? So, I mean, one of the reasons that I sort of was led down this path in the first place was because I had a few friends in high school who were trans, and I met some people later on in my adult life who were trans, and I wanted to learn more about their experience so that I could better understand where they're coming from and be more accepting to them, right? And so I started to learn about the community, I joined Facebook groups, and I just wanted to immerse myself in that experience so that I knew what my friends were going through. Yeah. And it just happened to lead you to un- more of an understanding of yourself. It did, because I started to see similarities with my own experience, right? Yep. And the the scary thing for me, especially as someone who has sometimes very severe anxiety, was that I saw how some of these people's families and friends completely abandoned them Mm -hmm. and it was an I I want to say it was an an irrational fear because of the people around me because logically I should know that the people around me are good people Mm -hmm. but it's rational in the sense of I just don't know. Well, as, as someone, you know, myself, again, you know, we've talked about my psychology background, things like that. I don't believe in the term irrational fear. Oh. I, I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, because all fears are there for a reason. You know, um, it may not make sense to other people, and that's why some people call it irrational. Um, but, like, you know, even if you're, like, afraid of, like, craft cheese slices or something like that, like... There's a reason, you know? It could be because someone almost suffocated, you know, you with one when they were a kid or, you know what I'm saying, or made you eat 27 of them in a row or, you know, like, you can't, it goes back to the goldfish and Timmy, you know, Timmy Jimmy story that we talked about, yeah. right? Whereas you cannot put yourself in someone else's shoes and and say, well, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't do it that way. Well, sure, okay. I mean, you can say that, but you can't. There's say, there's more context. There's so much more context that people don't understand and people mm-hmm. don't get that, like, you know, it, it goes back to, like, the nature versus nurture conversations and things like that, right? And a lot of that is just not, again, like, one, one of the perfect examples I give is you have identical twins. Mm-hmm. Identical twins. So they have the exact same DNA, right? Grow up, you know, same timeline, everything, right? One becomes like a CEO of a, you know, some Fortune 500 company, and the other one's like a drug dealer or something, right? And it's like, well, what the hell went wrong with the other one? It's like, nothing went wrong. You just don't understand that, like, just because they have the same DNA, they're, you know, same person in certain senses, they have different experiences because they're totally different people. Mm-hmm. You know, and so because of that, like that's why I personally don't believe in irrational, you know, irrational fears. You know, are there th- are there fears that can be silly to an extent? You know, like some of us go, ah, this seems, you know, kind of funny. You know, to it, sure, you you feel that way, but don't make the other person feel like they're less of a person for having that fear. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, like me, dude, I. Will not get on a plane. I am absolutely terrified. Really? 100% terrified. Get on a plane. Now, I've been on a plane before. Like, when I was, like, 14, 15 years old, like, I flew from Nashville to Texas and then back and stuff like that, you know, Mm -hmm. between my parents and stuff. Still, to this day, though, like, if I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. Now, if I had to do it, you know, could I push through it? Possibly. But. It's an experience you'd rather not repeat. Nope. Nope, Ter- terrified of planes. Absolutely terrified. Now, let me rephrase that. If it's a plane where I can wear a parachute <laughs> and possibly jump out, and you know, it's, but, but honestly, that, what, so what it really boils down to is the control aspect, right? Yeah. Like, I cannot fly on like a commercial 747, something like that, where I couldn't jump out of the plane because I don't have control over what can happen. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, if I was in like a little Cessna or whatever, you know, and to possibly jump out if I had to then maybe I could do it because 
I, I still have that control. Mm-hmm. You know, I might jump out in the fucking parachute fells, you know, and I still die, you know, because it's my time, it's my time. But at least at that point, like, I had, you know, the control of the situation. Yeah. You know, big old plane, like, fly from here to, like, like, one of my dreams is I would love to visit Ireland. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to take a cruise, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm going to have to take, like, the Titanic 3 or something. Like, I, I cannot, I cannot do... Planes, you know? <coughs> so that being said, you know, what, what, there's, I'm sure there's plenty of people, like, even people who will listen to this, where it's, it's mm-hmm. like, really, planes? Like, I, I'm not afraid of planes. It's like, well, it's like people that are scared of spiders, mm-hmm. you know, or snakes, or like, oh, dude. My, a, my buddy, know. my buddy Brad, he is terrified of any any kind of insect. Yeah. Like, like will straight up be petrified in his chair. Like, not not able to get up and move well, to like kill it or get rid of it or anything like just straight up he sees but, it he is frozen but it's, some, it's something that's like one one thousandth of your size yeah you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but terrified of it you know mm-hmm. so that's the thing it's like is it considered you know is that technically an irrational fear like rationally you can be like oh no you know, that, 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 that's what I hate about the word you know is like no, that makes sense. you can rationalize anything and so technically any fear you can technically call irrational because you can rationalize why it's you know shouldn't be a fear to some people, you know. So yeah. I get that. So anyway, that's you know we went <laughs> off on a little tangent there, but the point is is like you know your fear it, it is completely understandable and and valid, mm-hmm. um, you know, due to especially a lot of your experiences like you saw with your friends, mm-hmm. um, and, and again, I, you know, I've known that Ash was Ash. Well, not necessarily. I didn't know the name because we, you know, that just came recently. But mm-hmm. I, I knew that Ash was trans for a long time, and at the same time, you, know, you got to let that person get to where they want to be in their time, you know, in their own time. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing too, you know, that I really want people to understand. That listen to this is there's going to be people, you know, let's say you're in the same you know, or similar situation. There's gonna be people, you know, that want to like push you, like you know, get to that, you know, whatever. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about it. Do it. Yeah. In, do it in your own time. Please, it, it, please take that to heart because even even still after coming out, I'm not completely like, I'm not completely settled yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still present and dress very masculinely. Um, my voice hasn't changed at all because I don't have, you know, I I just don't have a higher pitched voice. Well, I I think a lot of those things too, you know, do take time. Um, so don't know if they'll ever see this. Hope that they do at some point. One of my friends, uh, the still Facebook friend, haven't seen him in a long time. I think I told you about them is, uh, Christina Price. So I knew... Christina as Chris, you know, well, that, that's how I met that, that particular person, mm-hmm. and it was Chris Price, and Chris, very masculine, I, I mean, was a very masculine person, you know, bigger beard than I could ever hope to have, you know, type thing, um, voice about as deep as mine, you know, that type of thing, and it took Christina a long time, you know, to to transition into what she is now, mm-hmm. you know. So, if you do see this, Christina, love you, still love you, still here for your friend. Can't wait to see you again. Uh, like I said, still friends on Facebook and stuff. It's just when I go back to Chattanooga, I don't get to see everybody, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But that being said, you know, it's like so that you know, like some people might be watching right now and have the question: Well, wait, you're Ashlyn now, you know, you're a she. What's with the beard, right? So, let's talk about that for a few people, okay? Well, I, before before that, I do want to finish my previous thought. Oh, sure. In that, you know, and actually I was going to be talking about the beard in a second yeah, anyways yeah, yeah. on this train of thought. Because, like, th- this process for me has taken a lot of introspection over almost three years now. And 
six months of therapy. <laughs> yeah. So that's the and thing yeah. so like, there's gonna be people for better or for worse, who are going like if you if you start to confide in someone, they're gonna be people for better or worse that want to like help you to the next stage, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, especially because for some people it's like, it's just exciting. Like, they want to help you because they are close with you. However, you do need to take it at your own pace. Because, like, I mean, for me... But that's also not to be said, to, to, to you know say that, though. For some people that might be helpful, right? Because it, because it, maybe they need that push. Maybe, oh, they, maybe they need might, that push. It might be. Yeah, so, so we're not telling you to, like, to, to like disregard it. You know. Just consider it. Exactly. Consider it, but like make sure that you're going at a pace at which just know which you are comfortable. Just know what's right for you. Yeah. Just know what's right for you. And you know? and, and and maybe knowing what's right for you is going to take time, which is the time when you have correct. to say, I I don't want to take this step. Yet. Absolutely. Like 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 for example, like I can bring up stuff you know that has you know now that we're talking about these things, mm-hmm. um, you know when when Ashlyn was um, going through the phases and stuff, um, I offer to save space in my home. Um, you know, for, like, for example, reach down beside you. It's still there, by the way. You've left it here. Yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> like, you know, we had some friends. Hold on. It says quick trip. But uh, some friends of ours and, and myself, we all pitched in and got Ashlyn some makeup. Mm-hmm. When we, you know, when we found out what was going on. And so Ash has left it here. You know, since that time. Because I, at the time, yeah. I couldn't keep it at home. Because I didn't want my dad to find it. Exactly. Because I hadn't come out to him yet. Exactly. And, and I wasn't ready to really use it yet either. Yeah, exactly. And so, and, and so that's the point. Is like, you know, that that's, has sat there for a couple months now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take it home today, though. You can. That's fine. Um, but then I had all for all, all for also, like, for example, like I have a second bedroom that had the, you know, the, the set of drawers. And like for you wanted, you know, if you wanted to wear your more feminine clothing, things like that, it never came, to, you know, like that never came to pass. Or but like the offer meant so much. But and, and so that's what you know. That's I guess what I'm trying to get to for people is offer the help, but don't expect you know anyone to, to have to take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, that, that's the big thing about it is like if you want to be an ally, if you want to be someone who helps those people, you know, those people that are trying to transition, things like that is understand that if you offer and someone doesn't necessarily take you up, you know, quote unquote, on your offer, it's not because they don't appreciate what you're trying to do. Yeah, and, and don't take it personally. 100%, exactly. You, t- you take it as, hey, it means the world to them that you even offered to have that there. You know, like, like I never expected anything with Ash. It was, hey, you're one of my best friends. And anything that I can do to help with that. So, like, that was the thing. Is like I had these things to offer. Here are the things I have to offer. If you want to take me up on them, you're welcome to. If you don't, it's okay. Because you've got to do things on your time. Mm-hmm. And so, that's the point we're trying to make, you know, when we're talking about those things. Yeah. Is just that, you know, we want you to be helpful. We want you to be an ally. We, we love, we love allies. Allies are awesome. But you got to be an ally for the right reasons. You can't be an ally because you want to be labeled the ally and have this title and, you know, look cool to people, right? You know, that's the kind of person that wants to force you to do those types of things. you got to be the ally because you really want to be the ally. Because you really love the person, you really care about them, you really want to help them. Mm-hmm. And continuing that train of thought, you know, I've I have been asked, you know, about the beard and about the clothing I wear and how I'm presenting and stuff and it you know it's just frankly complicated because you know I have a lot of self-esteem issues one of the other reasons I went to therapy in the first place um and for the way that I currently present which is more masculine I view my beard as one of my only redeeming qualities it, and I know that's like some twisted part of my head that's you know 
I not say liking. Your, your, your eyes are beautiful. That's true. Sorry. I do like my eyes too. Sorry. I do like my like, eyes you're, too. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Like. But I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like the way I look without my beard. I've, I've done it before and when I a, was in high school. That's completely understandable. Yeah. But that's also part of, so like part of that transition too, though, for you. And we've talked about like, for example, growing your hair out, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes, while you were presenting masculine with the shorter hairstyle and things like that, you know, the beard is very extenuating and whatever, right? But I think as you get, you know, as the time comes and your hair gets longer and you get more comfortable with that, oh, then, the, then the beard can go away. And that's, you, yeah. that's the plan. Exactly. And so that, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's but, the thing. Is like, yeah. guess what that takes, though? It takes time. Yeah. So, you, you, know, you, you know, I mean, we could get you wigs, I guess, <laughs> you know, technically if you yeah. want wigs. But I'm saying, like, if you really want your hair, like, your natural hair longer... It takes time. It's yeah. Like it's just not. It's not something that happens overnight. But yeah, you know, and I've been I've been asked about the clothing and about the beard and stuff, and, and frankly, it's just that, you know, um, I mean, part of it right now for me is a is a financial barrier. Mm-hmm. I to to buy new clothes takes money that I don't have. So. Um, and that so so that brings up a good point. This is the point I wanted to make for those people out there. This is you know what we just talked about too again. Is or you take it at your own own pace at your own time, right? Just because someone you know comes out and you know is the person that they are, but necessarily you know the world doesn't see them that way because of certain things. There's a lot of factors that can be involved in that, and so you, you just have to trust and love the people around you and have the right people around you. For example. Um, to, to have have that, yeah, like you said, it's a financial barrier, you know. I I I'll tell you right now, like I mean, I'm I'm very you know much myself, you know, a masculine person, things like that. But I even still don't have like I don't have the money to go buy a new wardrobe if I wanted it, even for as I am, you know, with you know, to match the wardrobe I have now. Mm-hmm. So you know, to expect someone to just automatically be like, oh well. I've decided I'm this, and now I'm going to just, you know, and you have to have a like, whole new fucking wardrobe and all those different things. It's not fun. It's not easy. No, and, and like, so so for other people, you know, that are out there, and it's just like, oh, well, you say you're a female, but you don't look like, well, you know what? This is the best advice I can give to everybody. It, when it comes to the world, is, uh, you know, treat treat the world like you're blind. You know, this is coming from someone who is technically blind in one eye, right? But treat the world like you're blind. You know? If if everyone in the world was blind and we couldn't see anybody, right? Then none of this would matter. You know? Mm-hmm. Only thing that would matter would be, you know, how people knew you like, based on how you talked to them and how you presented yourself, you know, from, from a personality standpoint, things like that. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest problems that I see in the world, right? Is the people people don't treat the world like they're blind. If they treated the world like they were blind, this world would be so much different. Because not only would it affect that, it affects things like racism, you know, and just all kinds of just we could go down a whole rabbit hole when it came to that. But that's you know that's the advice I, I have to people is treat the world like you're blind. Yeah. Treat people that you you know, meet like you're blind. You know. And what's cool about that is once, you, when you lose one of those senses, all the other senses, you know, heighten, right? And, and the one that is the most important is this and here, what you feel, you know. And if you, if you treated people that way, if we if we could all treat people that way, life would be so much better. I agree. But yeah, I mean, with what I'm doing, you know, it's like. There's just things in the way, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I'm working on growing my hair out, and you know as that does, I'm gonna trim the beard down a little bit at a time. I haven't told you this yet, by left. the way. Yeah. So this is a slap patch podcast exclusive here. So the reason why I haven't cut my hair in a long time because mm-hmm. I'm growing it out with you. Aww. So, I uh, I usually keep my hair. For those who know me, I keep my hair really short a lot. 
but I knew Ash was going through this thing and, and trying to get somewhere with it. And so, uh, you know, I am personally growing my hair out longer um, until they get to the point where they're comfortable with where they're at. Then I'll probably, you know, cut it back down or like have a mullet or something. <laughs> it's just, it'd be <laughs> weird, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm growing my hair out with you, friend. So we're going to go through this adventure together. All right. Which you know for a couple of fat people in, in summertime sucks because it gets hot. <laughs> but true. but it's true. growing my hair out with you, we're gonna get there. Uh, you know, because I want to get to the point where we can like braid each other's hair and yeah, put you know ponytails and stuff. It's one of the one which of is, the things I'm look very much looking forward to learn how to do is braiding hair. Which is really funny and total side note, but my wife. So for those who have seen my wife on the podcast before, those who know my wife in person, like she had hair all the way down to her butt. Like she had really long hair, and she literally got it cut like above her shoulders. And but she looks adorable. Oh yeah, it's, she, it's awesome. She looks amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I even made the comment the other day. I was like, "Wait, what, who are you? Like my wife's gonna be really jealous. I got this hot new girlfriend." <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, but yeah. So it's really it's really funny because we're going. The opposite direction of what Chrissy's going right now because <laughs> she actually wants it even shorter, like up to her chin. But oh, really? Well, yeah, but she didn't want to go too extreme the first time. So yeah, she so wanted she, to so, see see what it yeah, was she like. Yeah, she cut it there, but she, she even told me she's like, I want it a little bit shorter. I was like, babe, you know, do whatever you want to do. Like, you can shave your head. I don't care. Like, I love you anyway. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. So, sorry. Side note. But to get back on topic and what we're talking about here. Um, you know, and we definitely want to talk about your stuff. There's some other things I want to talk about in it as well, which is just, you know, pride in general, which we talked about. This is Pride Month. So that's for those who are, you know, in the LGBTQ community, for those who don't know what that means. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, queer. And, and then... And then plus. So, because there's things like gray sexual you know or you know asexual, asexual grays you know that, that. so there's, there's a lot of things you know sexuality wise one thing that we don't support is ageism sorry don't support it don't care who you are you know someone who's like i identify as a 13 year old no doesn't work sorry yeah you know there, there's, there's some boundaries you just can't cross there there are definitely things that are just you know kind of weird but yeah Some things that aren't good. But anyway, the point is, you know, so for our lesbian friends, our gay friends, our bi friends, myself, again, I'm pansexual. Um, You know, any people who are in that queer community. um, And speaking of that, ah, I lift it upstairs. Dang it. But yeah, like I have a pen on my backpack that's a D20. That's the colors of the pansexual flag Mm -hmm. that says that's how I roll, you know? Like, I, I represent, you know, and, and I told you this recently when we talked about it. Ash's journey is actually what helped me to be more comfortable with who I am. Like, I've been pansexual for a long time, but never really talked about it, never really presented it to a lot of people. Because, I mean, again, hearing my voice, seeing how masculine I look, things like that, like, people just don't expect it. People, people often expect... Uh, if you'll if you'll pardon it, uh, a little bit of fruitiness among queer people. They do, right? Right, you know. Which I'm, I'm kind of. I mean, I'm goofy, so I mean, you're yeah. goofy, but yeah. I mean, uh, from from the initial, the initial perspective, you don't have that sort of flamboyance I, I, that is often expected and no, stereotyped. I, I will guarantee you that ninety nine percent of people who meet me think I'm cishet. Yeah. Like so, cis is. Cisgendered, which is like I, I am technically not me. I, I'm technically <laughs> cis, right? Because mm-hmm. I am I'm a male presenting, you know, and that's what I was born out of. That name. So it's, I'm, I'm cisgendered in that sense, right? And then het is heterosexual, so you know a lot of cis het men are very, you know, not all of them. Sorry, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to put people in a barrel, but like, you know. That is your your number one category for homophobic people. Like, most of the time, right? Like, you know, cishet, cishet men, you know, it was just cishet people in general, you know, mm-hmm. are usually, like, where you find your, your, your homophobia a lot of times. And so, yeah, a lot of people who meet me, when they first meet me, they're like, you know, so, like, 
I want to bring up a couple other friends of mine um, real quick. So a friend of mine, Jen Leach. Um, uh, Jen and I worked at Match Firm together as well with, with Evan. And Jen, um, I'm pretty sure, is them they. Pretty sure them they. Um, not quite sure, but just from things I've read and, and things like that and conversations, you know, whatever. I'm pretty sure that they are also, um, it, at the very least, non binary, but maybe even trans themselves. And her wife, or their, sorry, shit. See, people still make mistakes. But their wife, uh, Jerrica. Um, I've never gotten the pleasure to meet Jerrica, but Jerrica's awesome from everything I've seen. And then a really good friend of mine as well, or our, our mutual friend, me and Jen, is uh, Alec. Alec Ryan. And Alec is an amazing person. Uh, Lupin the Fourth, if you want to look him up on Twitch and YouTube and stuff. Amazing streamer. But those are two people that I met when I was at Mattress Firm, for example. Amazing people. Love them to death. Wish I could spend more time with them. Um, but like when I first met both of them, I'm pretty sure they met me and they thought that guy's probably anti-gay. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, I want to be your friend. <laughs> I'm actually gay myself. You know, like kind of thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's just one of those situations. Like I, that's it, it's it's like one of those situations that pops up in my mind where I'm like, and I, I actually I think I made a fool of myself when I first tried to introduce introduce myself to Jen because like I remember having a conversation with her and trying to like find all these things like to tell her that we had in common so I was like well my sister's gay and my cousin's gay and like all that, you know and she's just looking at me like or they sorry they're just looking at me like why are you telling me this shit <laughs> you know but it was because I was trying to find the common ground mm -hmm. you know uh, and, and it's so hard sometimes for uh, people you know in the community like like for it, it, like another thing with my personal sexuality for example is it's not necessarily completely accepted in the community sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so pansexuals, bisexuals, and asexuals, for example, are like the, the, what we call the trinity of forgottenness, you know, when it comes to to, yeah. to that community. And and the reason that is is because um, when you have someone who is bisexual or pansexual. And they are in what we call a, a hetero relationship. A hetero passing relationship, like yours and Chrissy's, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you don't talk about it, which there's not, like, you don't introduce yourself typically as, hey, my name's Tyler and I'm fucking Pan. <laughs> like, you don't do that necessarily. So you're, you're perceived often as straight. They're away. like cast iron or uh, nonstick. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> and so you know because you pass in in that kind of a relationship, and if people don't know, they assume, mm -hmm. and then asexual people are often assumed as straight and single, not that they are. Yeah. Whereas actually, like, and and I'm I'm bisexual, and I'm trans. But Chrissy is a great, a great example. So she's not purely asexual. Mm -hmm. um, but she's very strongly like Chrissy's bi in the sense of like she, she finds women just as beautiful as she finds men she's demisexual which for, for those who don't know demisexual it means a strong uh, emotional connection you have to have a strong emotional connection to someone and but yet like she was a virgin until she was 30 like she was a virgin until she met me you know and then was even a virgin until way after until almost until we got married like well at least until we got our house you know um because like sexuality to her like the, the the whole physical sexual thing was not you know that was not what drove her it was the connection between us um which was a huge difference like so just you know talk about that for a second when it comes to sexuality right mm -hmm. i'm like way over here on the scale when it comes to sexuality like, I was in open relationships, swinging relationships with multiple partners, you know, at certain times, you know, things like that, to the point where, like, I've, you know, we won't talk about specific things, you know, we've talked about it, but I've slept with a lot of people. I'm not proud of it. I'm not sitting here trying to brag, but I have. 
my wife had never slept with anybody before she met me. And so, you know, you know, it's kind of like the old saying goes, opposites attract type of thing. It was, you know, that's kind of what happened with us. And, you know, even to the point now where she's still, you know, trying to, you know, come to grasp with even, you know, with, with her sexuality even that she has, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, even, um, you know, there are times where, um, you know, we've, we've been married now for like two years almost. And I'm not, you know, there's no complaints in our sex life. I think our sex life is fine. But like, uh, you know, I will be in the mood and it's just completely off her radar, you know? And I have to be understanding of that, you know, and understand, hey, look, you know, that's just the difference in, you know, who we are as people, you mm-hmm. know, and, 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 you know, that, that type of thing where it's just like she has no interest whatsoever and it's not because she's not interested in me. It's not because she doesn't love me or doesn't, you know, want to make me happy or anything like that. Just not on her radar, you know, because that's just not the person she is. Mm-hmm. And so that's what, you know, people need to understand about people who are, you know, close to a or gray you know in that in that sense is you know it, not everybody's driven by that mm-hmm. there are a lot of people in life that are you know like I'll tell you right now I wish that I would have had sex later in life than what I did because I would have accomplished so much more because by the time you know when I did end up having sex as a teenager well then at that point like that that was what drove me for a lot you know that was a lot of my motivation mm-hmm. and it was sad because like well hey you know I wish my motivation would have been like you know <laughs> you know making more money or you know trying to be better in, you know it, it just, there's so many other motivations that could have been better for me at, but at certain times especially like in my late teens early 20s my entire motivation was you know uh, validation through sexual conquest and it was sad like like I look back back on it now like it was truly sad you know yeah and so you know that type of thing but but yeah you know talking about heterosexual passing relationships I'm bisexual and trans but appear masculine Mm -hmm. my partner they is gender fluid but appears feminine Mm -hmm. they are also pansexual however when we go walking through the park hand in hand, they think we look a... we look like a boy and a girl, and that's it. Yeah, to all, yeah, yeah, to 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 to, <laughs> to the non knowing, you know, ah, yeah, exactly, yeah, they, 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 to to the uh, um, general populace, I guess you you know is the best way to put it, right? Mm-hmm. Is is yeah, you look like you're the man and she's the woman, you know, that kind of thing. Totally not the case, you know. It's, yeah, it, it's it's crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. how that goes so but yeah I um yeah it's having this experience has been both <laughs> in some in some ways almost traumatizing and in other ways the best thing that could have ever happened to me well absolutely so <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, like most of the time that we have like the best things that ever happened, can, can be traumatizing as well. But, but it, it definitely, I, I, I think you should look at it as you know one of the best things that ever happened to you, in the sense of, you get to be yourself. Because mm-hmm. here, here's the, I, I, here's the that sad. Is, that the, is the way I choose the, to look at it. The sad truth, for a lot of people, and this is why you know we want people to know out there, that you do have allies, you do have friends, and things like that is the sad truth is there's so many people that never get to that realization. Or, you know, they're... So, a perfect example I can give, growing up in the South, you know, growing up in the South, because of all the prejudices down there, not just racism, but sexism and, you know, homophobia, all those types of things that we have to deal with in the South, there's so many friends of mine that, you know, um, that I still know to this day that haven't been able to come out completely because they can't. Mm -hmm. They feel that they can't because, you know, their family and things like that. And it's sad because, Mm -hmm. you know, you're you're living... You only get to... You get to live one life, people. 
I mean, maybe, maybe there's reincarnation. Maybe I'll come back as like a tree frog or something. I don't know. <laughs> but the, you know, the point is, like, you get one life. I want to be an otter. Bro, you know how cool it would be to be an otter. <laughs> that would be the shit, bro. Dude, otters are adorable. Otters, man. they're adorable. Like, even if you li- even if you got like <laughs> you know living in the zoo life as an otter, right? Like, it's fucking fantastic. It's fucking like you're just chilling. They throw you some fish every once in a while. Like, bro, otters it's are the life. Otters are dope. I, I wouldn't mind being on. We should do it. We should do a, ca- a podcast on the life of an otter at some point. <laughs> but, but so so, for those who are still watching, um, and one thing I want to bring up, you know, because, and I meant to bring this up earlier in the podcast, you know, it is, I'm sure there's some people out there like, well, okay, you guys are supposed to be a nerdy, geeky, you know, podcast. Like, what does this have to do with it? The biggest thing that it has to do with is there's so many people in our community. They're just like Ashlyn. They're just like me. You know, the or or that has, you know, similar things like from from the queer perspective. <clears throat> um I won't bring up, you know, I can bring up this name because a lot of people don't know it, but for example, we have someone in our community um, named Violet. So she is eighteen years old, still a senior in high school, maybe this semester's over with at this point. I don't know. Uh, so maybe they've graduated at this point. Um, and then their partner. Um, shit. I can see I can see their face right now, but I can't remember their name. I'm sorry. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at him. Boy, I'm, I'm in the comments. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna phone a friend here in a second. <laughs> um, but anyway. Um, their partner is also, you know, graduating high school. Um, and one of the sad, like one of the saddest things that's happened to me in a long time was actually at the store. Violet's parents came in, called them by their dead name. Mm-hmm. You know, hold on one second. I'm gonna, um, oh wait, never mind. I don't have to. It just happened when I called Jonah. Jonas, 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 Jonas is Violet's partner. Sorry, <laughs> Jonas. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, no, no last names because I don't want to, you know, call anybody out or whatever. But, um, but we love Violet and Jonas. Um, they're part of a crew of people that come out, um, that frequent the store, and it's sad because someone in that position that is so young and is still reliant on living with their parents, things like that, you know, can't live the life that they really truly want to. But that's one of the things that happens at Slap Hatch and what we're proud, like, I, I hang my hat on it. I really do. And, and it's something I'm probably the most proud of is you can come in my store and be you. Um, when Violet's there, Violet is Violet. Violet will never be anybody other than Violet unless they change their name again and want you know to be something different that's up to them but Violet will always be Violet in in our store because Mm -hmm. that's what they deserve to be you know um I know there's a lot of people out there that have differing opinions um when it comes to um gender sexuality things like that here here, you know again this is my advice I would give and again, I'm 38 years old, so I'm older, I'm older than a, the majority of the people that come in the store, you know, and maybe even watch the podcast. So I'm in an older generation, you know, that type of, you know, thinking and whatever. But my, my thinking on it is this, is, um, you know, I, I live life by one philosophy, which is treat people like you want to be treated. So if, you know, if you wanted to live life a different way, how would you feel if someone else, you know, treated you different? That's just how I feel on it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, anyway, I've talked for a little while. <laughs> still want you to talk some more. Of course. Well, I actually wanted to sort of open it up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've found, and one of the reasons that I want to come out in the way that I did, is because I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> okay. You know? I get a lot of the same kinds of questions, mm-hmm. and... I wanted to maybe use this video, or at least part of it, as a sort of platform for that. 
So, do you have any questions for me that you think would be good so that I, might, people might ask, or, or questions uh, that you have for me? I was going to say, I personally don't, because you and I have had so many conversations outside of it. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> um, outside here. Um, but, like, some of the questions um, that you're probably asked a lot are, you know, so we already addressed, you know, the, the you, know, you know, masculine presenting still, which is, you know, again, it comes down to a lot of factors. Um, I guess probably the biggest question that a lot of people may have, um, and, and I, I guess to, to a degree I probably still have it myself, is, you know, what's been the most difficult thing for you in your transition? You know, like... You know, yeah. aside from like you know having to present it to your family and things like that, like you know we we we've addressed those things, but like what what's probably been like the most difficult thing for you, you know, trans, you know, in understanding yourself. Like, like let's put it that way. What's been the most difficult thing in understanding yourself? That is a hard question to answer. But I'll give it my best shot. You, and, a, you and asked for questions. I'm I not, did. I did. I'm Baba Wata. No, no, I, I got you. I'm Baba I, Wawa. I, I have been asked this question before, uh-huh. and I've usually copped out by saying that it was it was very difficult to come out mm-hmm. because I mean, if you're if you're not excluding that factor, that was the most difficult piece. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Like dealing with your family and stuff, I hundred percent expect that to be. But as far as but I'm talking I mean, about more on like an yeah, I, introspective, you know, type thing, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What was the most difficult piece of figuring that out? Sure. That's one way to ask the question, but there's probably other, other there's, ways. To, there's yeah. many, many ways to ask the question. I would say the most difficult part about it was that it for some trans people mm-hmm. it is very easy to tell even from a young age like they have extreme senses of dysphoria from a young age they have like very specific like um uh, tendencies and tendencies yeah. and yeah. signs that they go through yeah I didn't have those things. No. And in fact, I didn't even have what we call dysphoria until after I started this journey. Like, I, 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 like I'll give you a perfect example. Like, I feel like I have a pretty good, you know, gaydar, you know, sense, you know, mm-hmm. it's a joke, you know, but, but like, you know, for certain things, I literally, not, not in a negative way, not mm-hmm. in any kind of negative way, but the day you came out to me, I was I was shocked because I never would have known had you not told me. You know, mm-hmm. you, you don't present in any certain way. Like you exactly. You, you know, what I'm saying like you like I've known you and like I, I've even said it. You know, and, and I, now I gotta start changing it. But like like Spencer's Spencer Ash. No no no. Oh okay yeah. I'm going I'm going <laughs> yeah. to the previous. Gotcha. Spencer was my little bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So, so Spencer was my little bro, and that's all I knew. You know, like, this, this is my little bro, you know? Yes, you are Ash now, so no, I was not trying to misrepresent. I, I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was, I was trying it's, to... It's okay. I was, trying to talk, <laughs> I was trying to talk in past tense, so yeah. I, I apologize. But, I got you. But yeah, like, Spencer was my little bro, so I was just like, this is my little bro, you know? This is my dude. It's my little sis now. It's, it's, it's still my buddy, my best friend, you know, I still love you. Nothing changes, like, nothing has changed from that perspective, but it was, it was still just a shock to me. It would be like, never would have known had you not told me, mm-hmm. you know, that type of thing. Yeah, so. and you, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, like, figuring out what this really meant to me was, like I said earlier, my path began from trying to learn about trans people. Mm. And noticing similarities in how they talked about their experiences and their feelings and their past, I noticed similarities with that to things that I've experienced and mm-hmm. things that I've felt. Maybe not necessarily outwardly expressed, but things that have gone on up here. Yeah. And, you know, I think back to 
there were a couple times in middle school when I said, um, and I didn't really know how to take this at the time, and I was just trying to explain how I felt to someone, but there was a time where I said, and then said a few times after, I feel like mentally and emotionally I am half man, half woman. Uh, here, and then... It, it, so, so let me clarify something on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like, again, myself, I'm pansexual, but I still, you know, cis male in that, in that type of sense, right? From a psychological standpoint, I think a lot of us are that way. It's just that a lot of people don't accept it. I th- to, to, to be fair. I, I, I think that might be true. I don't know for sure, but it was something that I had noticed and reflected on Mm -hmm. at a young age and i didn't have this lens of perspective to view it through at the time and and let me let me clarify that a little bit more is it's it's not always half and half like it's just i don't believe that really anybody except for i mean there's some that just you know feel feel they are but like i don't believe anybody is a hundred percent one way or the other when it comes to male, male versus female type thing, because first of all, biologically, we're all female to start, and then you know a certain chromosome hits, you know whatever. So we all have, you know, certain biological, you know, you know perspectives from that standpoint, and so like there are people who are more one way or the other. I do believe, you know. Well, the thing about it is that this is not gender is not. A nature thing it's a nurture thing it is a it is in most cases it is a uh, socialization thing whereas mm-hmm. then there's a part of you that is that has a desire to be another way sometimes yeah yeah so. I, I, I get what you're saying I'm sorry I just wasn't trying to interrupt or like you know yeah like say you're wrong in what you were saying it was just more about a my, my personal perspective on things and the things that I've like you mm-hmm. know viewed myself which is that you know, even myself again very masculine presenting you know things like that like I still believe I have a lot of feminine qualities when it comes to emotions you mm-hmm. know where, whereas I, I believe a lot of people do that they just don't accept it sometimes you know mm-hmm. that, that's basically what I was trying to get get yeah. at so, yeah, I get it. Um, but there were things like that that had happened throughout my life that I didn't have that I didn't look at through the perspective of possibly being trans until three years ago. Mm-hmm. Until you and got the so, information. Until you until yeah. Until you got the information you needed to understand it. Yeah. And so as I started to introspect and look at these Ugh. things from this other perspective and from the relation to trans people, I sort of went down a rabbit hole of self-discovery, and in that time, you know, something, something that I learned is that there are trans people who are not, um, how do I put it, they don't experience dysphoria in the same way uh-huh. rather it's it comes from almost a preference in how they'd like to present uh-huh. rather than an innate like feeling that they get well yeah and a lot of preference comes from so we've talked about this before so the greatest fear that human beings have is the fear of the unknown Mm -hmm. that's why change is so hard for so many people right because there are people who will keep doing the same thing over and over knowing it's not the best for them but they also know it's not the worst you know what I'm saying like for example I'm a perfect example of that when it comes to the drinking thing we talked about right Mm -hmm. so it's change is so hard and so there's a lot of people so they will do it out of you know the, the old saying is force of habit Right, so they'll still like at least I think this is what you're getting to is like there are people who are trans who still like like for example they're trans they're trans female but they'll still present male and things like that just 
purely out of force of habit because it's easier to them. There are people who do that, yeah. and that's not what I was getting to. Oh, that oh. is a good point. Oh, I'm sorry. More, more that the the being trans part and and actually going through a transition is less from an innate inside desire or feeling that they get that in some cases we call it, or I wouldn't say that feeling is called dysphoria but rather that feeling can cause dysphoria yeah um but it's simply a preference in how they might want to portray themselves okay. right so and it's it's kind of weird to describe because for someone who hasn't had either that very innate feeling and then a simple preference for it it's hard to like distinct it right mm -hmm. for me though it started with a preference you know and and i viewed it in this other way and like there were times in middle and high school where i was like and many people have had this conversation with themselves but like what if i was a girl for a day right a lot of people have had, or, or for girls, a lot of people have had the, what if I was a guy for a day? Like, what would I do? How would I feel? Like, a lot of people have that conversation with themselves, mm -hmm. and nothing ever comes of it necessarily. But, like, I had that conversation with myself, and I'm like, what if I was like that always? Mm -hmm. And that brought comfort to me. Makes sense. And then that continued down into, you know, it, and eventually I, I developed that innate feeling that some people have, right? Yeah. Because I pursued that line of questioning with myself. So let's talk about that. Here's a question I have for you, mm -hmm. you know, on that line. So you've only been asked for... A week, <laughs> not even. I was gonna say a few days, but yeah. I was gonna <laughs> say. Tell me about those few days, just from an, again an introspective, you know, feeling, versus the twenty-two years prior. What's the difference? Like, what 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 what, do you, what would you say is the biggest? If you could describe it in like one emotion, what is, what is the biggest difference? The biggest emotion difference? Confidence. I love it. Immediate relief. Where's your phone? So I, I want to bring this up because I want Ash to show this. So show, show us your cover. It says, if for those who can't read it, just put it a little bit closer to the thing. It says, proud to be me. And I remember you posted this, you know, just yesterday, right? Yep. And... It, like and, and I, I will tell you, just for someone who's been around Ash for for a couple of years now, like even like last night, we've been to karaoke a few times. Last night, you were a different person in a, in, 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 in a very positive way. And when I say that, you were just you seemed like you 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 were being yourself. You were just enjoying it and and embracing it and and so when we, when you when you went to sign up for your karaoke songs for example you you were ash this time not spencer anymore you know you, you were ash and you would get up there and just you, you're this is a very masculine term to say but like your bravado or like you're like I'm trying to think of the, the better word to sass it. Yeah, your sass, you know. I, I, I feel... Your confidence. I well, felt... You, the, actually, the, the real word is confidence. You know, I, your, your I confidence felt was glowing. There. You did, and you did glow. You, 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 exactly. You were glowing bright like a fucking North Star, you know. And I loved it, and I loved seeing that, you know. Um, like when, <laughs> you know... When me and Max came up and tried to be your background singers in, in uh, <laughs> Blue on Black. Yeah. yeah. We all had a fucking great time, you know? Like, you were singing the song, you were doing great, but we were just in the background, you know, all night doing some background stuff for you, things like that. Like, that was, that was fantastic. It was, like, some of the most fun I've had in such a long time. 
but it also seemed like a lot of fun for you as well. It was. And so I, I loved seeing that. Yeah. So I'd say the back to answer that first question that you asked me that was so hard to answer is it it wasn't I can't say that there was even a single most difficult step. It was just constant introspection pursuing lines of questioning about why I feel the way I do and Ugh. then and then how to you know how to change to for the better based on what I answered myself with right but at the same time I think that also you know and that's one of the hardest things to grasp or understand when you're going through that is like there's so much about you that doesn't need to change. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's one of the big things I want other people to understand. Out. <laughs> Sorry, my dog's down here. Out, hi, Bentley. Hi, Out. hi, Bentley. I love you, too. What's up, buddy? Hey, he's got a donut on his ear because he had to have surgery on his ear. Aw. Out. We're recording, baby. Thanks. All right, but... uh <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was just saying. Um, what the hell was I talking about? I don't know. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, guys, because I was going to make a point there. Um, yeah, I really just lost what I was talking about. Um, Pup. <laughs> yeah, good old pupper. Um, but anyway... You know, the big big thing that you know we want everyone to know. Oh, oh, we're talking about things that you don't need to change. That's what we're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what I want. You know, the point I'm trying to make to people is the greatest part about so many people that do transition is that they finally get to actually be themselves. But by being themselves, it's really just an enhancement upon what they were to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ash is. A, perfect example of that for me you're still the same loving caring kind wonderful person that you were before none of that has changed it's just that you have more confidence in being that person and being yourself and that's that that means you know the world to me as your friend as much as it hopefully means to yourself is that you're not a different person like these people are not different than who you know, <clears throat> who you knew before. It's that they actually want to try to actually be themselves fully. Will there be some differences and some changes and things? Sure, there's differences. Like, eventually there'll be a difference in appearance. De- eventually the beard will be gone. You know, the hair will be longer. There'll be makeup. Not going to change who's sitting beside me. It's not going to change the person that has been doing this podcast with me the entire time. I want you guys to know that and understand that. Is Ash is still digital chimera, you know? Like, (laughs) still digital digital chimera, you know? Like, that part hasn't changed. I still have 260 games in my Steam library, and I still have over 2,000 hours played in Skyrim. And still, (laughs) you know, (laughs) how many D&D games a week, and, you know... (laughs) F and M on Fridays, you know, like I said, karaoke, you know, the, it doesn't change who you are as a person. The only thing that it changes is that you actually get to be you now. And you don't have to um, be behind this facade of what other people expect you to be. And, and if anything, that that enhances everyone's life. To be honest, mm-hmm. it doesn't just enhance her life; it, it enhances all of our lives because now you get to be you. Completely, mm-hmm. you don't just you don't just see part of you. You don't just you know we don't just get to see the the awesome parts. We get to see all the awesome parts now. You know, not just you know some of them. And and that's 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 the big thing that I want people to understand is um, if you know somebody out there, you know, don't be afraid. And if you have questions, so you know, we haven't gotten to the end of the show at all. But you know, if you have questions, please, hundred percent. Feel free to ask them. Yeah. 
either in the comments below or you know you can DM us on Facebook or whatever you know. Yeah, any any way you want to reach out if you're local you know slap as gaming if not I'll tell you what guys and you know if I have to I'll block numbers but my personal phone number is area code 423 637 9637 it's on my business cards so I'm not afraid to give that out somebody out there needs to reach out text me call me I'll be there for you don't care you know that's just that, that's what this community is all about that's what this podcast is about that's what slap hash community is about that's what I, that's what we're about you know that's what is all about being inclusive and accepting and understanding for everybody you know and that's so like I said I know that it might not seem like a very nerdy or geeky conversation today but that's not that's, I mean it, it is to an extent like what we want to be a, you know the podcast to be about but we're really just about acceptance and, 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 and just you know everything in general you know that that that, that encompasses that so that's why today's conversation is about what it's about mm -hmm. so do you have any other questions that I mean you've got for me? so, so to be honest like again I don't have any personal questions because mm -hmm. we've talked about so much um, the only the only other question you know I think that that could be you know really helpful for those out there would be um, now that you've gone through it, mm -hmm. was it as hard as you thought it was going to be? And then, and then to follow that up, to the follow-up question to that is, even if it was or even if it was harder, was it worth it? So, so answer in, in the in that order. Like, yeah. Do you think it was as hard? Was it actually as hard as you imagined it was going to be? Yes, you know, yes or no type of thing. And then even if it was or wasn't, was it still worth it? That, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting. Because I didn't, at the beginning of this, because I didn't set out with this in mind necessarily, mm -hmm. um, my opinion of how difficult this was going to be changed every step of the way on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? Do you... Okay. Let me rephrase a little bit. Do you think that the difficulty was more self-imposed? Or... Was it like... Was was the difficulty actually truly out there and the things that you feared? or was, you know, So it's like... I guess the best way is like... You know, like, for example, like, the, the big, was, one of the biggest fears it was, like, your, more, it was more self-imposed than anything. Right. And for me, personally, it was very, very, it was very difficult. And the perceived difficulty that I had at any given time, mm -hmm. I think, was... Because it was self-imposed and not outwardly imposed. Not, not actual external forces. It was because, it, because it all came from me, it was as hard as I made it out to be. Well, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, if, if, yeah it's going to be as hard as you believe it to be if you, you know, it's like the whole, uh, you know, thinking it into existence type thing, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess, you know, so it's it's reality versus perspective type thing, right? It's yeah. like perspective wise, you thought it was going to be this difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let's just do like a like a one to ten. From from a perspective, you thought it was going to be a ten, right? Like yeah. But from a reality standpoint, how difficult was it actually? It really wasn't, and and the reason I say that is because all. Every every step of the way that I thought, that I I perceived as difficult, all I had to do was say something. Well, just be honest, right? Yeah. Just be honest with the person in front of me who I was I was coming out to. Yeah. Or be honest with my therapist, or just think about a problem, right? 
Mm-hmm. So all difficulty that I faced was self-imposed. It was all up here. It was all perceived. Now, that's not always going to... Let's just put this out there. And So the reason I'm asking this question, obviously, so to, to help people who want to come out and be themselves, right, to help them understand that maybe it's not going to be as difficult as you think it is. That being said, that being said, Ash is in a very fortunate situation. And what I mean by that is fortunate enough that their family is accepting. Mm -hmm. Fortunate enough that you, again, you've surrounded yourself with the right people that are also accepting. That's not the case for everybody, and we understand that. And so I'm not trying to belittle or, oh. or, yeah. or, or downplay anybody's difficulty when it comes to it. The only point we're trying to make is, is that maybe it's not as hard as you think it is mm-hmm. because maybe you just think it's that hard, you know, because, you know, because of the fears and stuff. So we're trying to give you confidence. We're trying to, you know, back you. But also understand that we, we know that there are people families out there that aren't as accepting as yours there are mm-hmm. members you know in your life that may not be as accepting so yes it may be as difficult as you think but that, that, that's the whole point of what I, like the question I want yeah. to bring up well and, and I want to add on to that with it, it it like like Tyler said in my situation I was very fortunate to have good people around me and that's not going to be true for everybody but here's the thing, even in the scenario in which I was right about all of my fears, I still had the choice, the one choice to just be honest, right? Mm-hmm. And if worse had come to worse and and this was what i had to do to prepare myself for for that fear i i had to become ready to let go Mm -hmm. because i i had mentally and emotionally prepared myself for okay when i tell my friend brad who i'm using this totally out of the blue i never think he would do this but if i told my friend brad and he hated me for it I was mentally and emotionally preparing myself for, yeah, yeah, never. I don't want that person in my life, right? Yep. And, <clears throat> and Brad wasn't that person for me, but, you know, I had to think about that with my parents to some extent, and that was really hard. It was really hard. And, you know, some people are still, like, financially dependent on their parents, like I am. I am financially dependent on my parents. I live with my dad. My mom pays for my therapy. We talked about Violet earlier and things like that, you know. And so, like, it it isn't necessarily... The, the consequences of those things would be more difficult than the actual act of coming out. Mm-hmm. Right? However, what I will say, to answer the second part of your question, the way I feel right now, not even, not even having started my transition, only since picking a name and coming out, not even three years from now when I look and sound like the person I want to look and sound like. I, it was not only just worth it, I would have done it even if it were ten times harder. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, so the point behind those questions, you know, like I said, was for people to understand, you know, that going back to, like I said, something I said earlier, you got one life. Live it. You know? And it's difficult sometimes. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes... You know, and, and I know some people are going to look at, you know, say, well, Tyler, you know, what are you talking about? You know, you don't know what it's like to be me. I don't. I do not know what it's like to be you. 100% don't know what it's like to be you. 100% don't know your situation and can't even compare. What I can tell you is that 
I personally have gone through a lot of things. I don't, we won't have to. We don't have to go into them. I've personally gone through a, a, a ton of things in my life that I thought I would never get through, and I did. Um, and there's two quotes I want to give you um, that are like my favorite quotes in life ever. Um, the first being. Uh, and my, my my most important one, I, I hold on to this, and it's it's something that's a very difficult thing to keep in perspective. But if you can, it's it's amazing. Which is your worst day is someone's best, and it's the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, we have so many blessings, you know, in, in this life that we don't even understand that we have. Sometimes, I brought it up the other day. I was talking to somebody like, you know, I'm a business and. I got a, a water fountain slash bubbler, as you guys call it. Yeah, you we know. call it the correct. Word. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a fountain you can drink water out of. Yeah, the you bubbler. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah a water fountain. Uh, that's in the back of my store. There's places in you know in this world and even in this country where you can't find that, and there's people that you know are dying of thirst. You know, mm-hmm. so that that's the first thing I want to put in perspective. And then my other quote. Which is one of my favorite quotes to, 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 that I've lived by is everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Yeah. You know, I want to repeat that real quick because I want people to really get it. Everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. And there's so many things that we're afraid of, so many things that hold us back because of, you know, or we get held back from because of our fears of things. For yourself. You could have been afraid, and it could have taken you a lot longer, for example. I remember um, when the night I came out to you, we were... <laughs> the night I came out to Tyler was right after we had recorded, I think, our second episode of this podcast. Mm-hmm. And we ended up staying up until 6 in the morning, mm-hmm. talking about different stuff that we were going through and some of that was about me being trans and I remember him talking about doing this episode when it came time Yep. and based on how afraid I was at the time I panicked and I'm like I hope that's more than five years from now it's been couple months four months yeah four months and it's because I was able to build a amazing network of support for myself oh yeah oh yeah and but but here's here's the thing about it that I want you to understand and this is what I want other people to understand too and this does like this plays into something I'll tell people like you know who you are and who you present yourself to be, and again, going back to that whole statement where I said, you know, treat people like you want to be treated, right? How you live your life and how you treat people in life is going to affect the people you have in your life. You had, you built that amazing network, not because you were trying, not because, you know, okay, I want to come out and I, you know, I got to build this amazing network. I got to find these people, you know, certain people. You built that amazing network just being the amazing person that you are. You got that network. I've been building it for years unknowingly. But but exactly. You got that network just because of who you are. You know, the rewards that we get in life are so much greater than we understand when it comes to what we actually do. And and that's why like for example, and we've had this conversation now, I'll tell the people today, I've said numerous times, you know, I'm a business owner, you know, things like that. I don't judge my life on the money I have in my bank account, on the possessions that I own, things like that. I judge my life, my riches, on the people I have in my life. And I've said this numerous times, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, whoever you want, you know, the, 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 the Saudi Arabians that have, you know, billions of dollars, whatever, none of them got shit on me. Because none of them have the amazing network of people that I have in my life. You know, and I'm lucky to have that. 
you know, but at the same time, that being said, and I'm, you know, I try to be as humble as I can, but I'm lucky, but it's not even necessarily luck. It's just because of, you know, what I've tried to do in my life to be, you know, there for people. And that's why I'm great, you know, grateful to have the people that I have, but I've worked my ass off for it and being, you know, the person I try to be. And so that being said, you know, you just, just be you. I'm telling people, man, just be you. Mm-hmm. Be yourself. I don't care if it's, you know, a boy that is now a girl or a girl is now a boy or non-binary or, you know, straight, bi, queer, whatever you want to be. Be you. But also accept other people for who they are too, you know? That's the big thing. That's another big thing. It's just be you, but also let other people be them. You know, as long as it don't hurt other people. Yep. That's how I look at it. It's all about the love, baby. And I want to extend my support to anyone out there. You know, we've talked about this before in, like, the mental health episode that we did. If there's anything you ever want to talk about and you just need a kind person who won't judge you to listen to you then talk or, to him talk or, to him not me no, I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, her sorry I'm, it's okay see, I'm an hey, asshole. look it's been five days okay four days it's been four days you're okay I swear, a month from now, I'm still going to be introducing myself to people like, Hi, my name's Spent Shit. <laughs> Spent Shit. My name is Spent Shit. I hope you do introduce yourself as Spent Shit. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, if you just need someone to talk to, or if you need advice about something, or anything like that, we are always here for you. 100%. Yeah. You know, and like if it's if it's a matter of you want to come out but you don't have good people around you, like we'll get you good people around you. You yeah. know, like we'll the, introduce well, it, it, you so, to the so, community that can support you. So here, here's the point I want to bring up for for people, and this is very important: is also understand that anything that you want to talk to about, to talk to us about in confidence, meaning maybe you don't want other people to talk about. It, no doesn't leave our mouths you can come to us with that confidence and understand you're you're in a safe space you mm-hmm. you're, you're, you know if you want to come talk to me about it but you don't want your friends you don't want your family you don't want anybody else to know yeah I mean, say, say you're one of the people at the shop and you're in a position like me a position that I was in at one point you know and you just aren't ready to tell your friends, but you you need someone to talk to about it. You can come to us, and we'll. If if you are like going to the shop every day, and you're like, I'm trans, I don't want to be called he or him anymore. I want to be called she they, but I'm just not ready for it. It's like when we're in the shop with you, we'll you know we'll call you whatever you want to be we'll, called publicly. We'll address you how you want to be addressed. Whatever. And then when we're behind closed doors. We'll call you whatever you want. Absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. I've known Ashley secretly, again, for four months, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. And for the past four months that we were doing episodes, it was Spencer, it was he, it was, you know, because that's what they preferred to to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now, she gets to be herself, and, you know, I'm doing my best to... To make it that way, you know. So I know I love you, but we'll do the same for you. And now that being said, you know, again, as you've seen in the episode a couple of times, I'm still, you know, some habits are hard to break. I've I've known this person sitting beside me, like I said, as Spencer for four years. I know this is Ashlyn now. I love her just the same as I did my little bro. You know, doesn't change. So, I hope you like those meat and potatoes. Yep, that's a lot to digest. That's a lot to digest. <laughs> that's some uh, 
That's some like uh, shepherd's pie on top of like a porterhouse or something. You know, like you know, it's a lot of meat. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I still got this McChicken over here. You do, you do still have a McChicken. It might be my McChicken. By the might time be, it might be your McChicken by the time we're done. But that's the campaign. You know, um, again, comments, DMs. Uh, you know, you can find us both on Facebook. Um, if you weren't previously friends with Ashlyn, their name actually is on Facebook now, Ashlyn. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You can find them that way, um, or you can find myself. You can find us through the Slap Patch, um, uh, the, the game store's actual, you know, uh, Facebook page because I, I, I answered that. So, uh, and if you want to reach out to Ashland specifically, but you don't have a way to reach them on Facebook, you can go through the Slap Patch, message me. I will, I will get you guys, you know, mm-hmm. or, or pre- people who you are you know, introduced. Um, I say you guys because I'm from the South. I say y'all, that kind of thing. But um, I say y'all too. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're here for everybody. But that's that's the meat and potatoes today. Uh, yeah. So let's get into this week's mains. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go first. All right. So again, you know, going back to game store stuff and stuff like that. I am super excited for Double Masters Two. Yeah. So we've got like the spoilers out for it now. There are some fantastic, fantastic, you know. So the whole set's about reprints. Mm-hmm. Um, but we finally got Imperial Seal. Yeah. So, you know. Much needed reprint. The $600 card at its base, you know. The Judge Foil, I think it was like around 800 at one point, you know. Like, it, it was ridiculous because it had only been printed in 3PK and um, as a Judge Foil, so... The fact that they're reprinting Imperial Steel is huge. Um, and, and portal. Well, well, and it has, <laughs> it has, um, it has implications not only for because it is a very, very much a, a CDH card, mm-hmm. but it's something that would I think would be played in casual, were it more accessible. And oh, that, yeah. now that it's more accessible, you know. I mean, casual. It's technically a worse. Vampiric Tutor. You know, like, yeah, you casual know. casual plays Vampiric Tutor and Demonic Tutor all the and time. Grim and, yeah. and Grim Tutor, even just Diabolic Tutor. Yeah. This is this is another good addition to those decks that would otherwise like I mean, even one of my most expensive decks is like barely more than the cost of Imperial Seal before the reprint. Yeah. So no, it's 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 a great reprint. Um, I don't know if you've seen the full art Crucible of Worlds, but that that card that is gorgeous. Looks so pretty. The card is gorgeous. Uh, they reprinted Doxa Extortionist, which we needed a reprint of because it was only you know it was only ever printed as a Judge Foil and a um, Commander. It was in the Commander like twenty seventeen, I think, C seventeen or something like that, maybe C eighteen. I don't remember, but uh, you know. No, no, sorry, it would be C-19, actually. C-19. But anyway, um, you know, Doc's Extortionist was like a $70, $80 card. It's finally being reprinted. Needed, mm-hmm. needed a reprint. Uh, Allosaur Shepherd, which was like a $70, $80 card because it, it had only been printed in the Jumpstart stuff. Um, yeah, they, they, did a, they did a great job with this set. Like, uh, yeah. you know, Sensei's Top, Cavern of Souls, Man of All. Like, they, they, there's a lot of great reprints. Um Especially for the commander community, so super excited about that. You know, so that being yeah, said, um, uh, we are taking pre-orders right now. So this will come out on Monday. We'll take pre-orders through the Friday you know, after this episode comes out. And I have offered. Um, we're doing two sixty-five on draft boosters and two fifty on collector boosters for those um, as a special deal right now. So. Um, if you come in and want to pre-order and you've seen the podcast here, if you, if you see this podcast, I will save you the tax as well. Hmm. So I, I will do those prices, you know, tax included for, for you. All right. So. That sounds good. A little incentive for watching the episode. Yeah. Gotta, gotta get that viewership. Hey Amen. You know. <laughs> gotta get that viewership. Gotta get that. Uh, we should we should give a code word. 
So if they can't say just I watch the podcast, we should give like a code word. You have to no. You gotta say you know if you say you watch the podcast, that tells me that you. What secret secret code? <laughs> secret code word is discount code. What's the discount code, Tyler? Pride month. Pride month. Pride month. Discount code Pride month. Discount code Pride month. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Well, my main this week is um. Raft. Raft. Yeah. Raft. I'm very excited. There's a there's a game I've been playing for many years called Raft. It's a survival adventure game where you play. Someone's from me for a second. Okay. Sorry. This is this is <laughs> or this is Ashlyn's uh, fidget toy, and they play with it all the time. And they're talking now, so I'm gonna play with it. <laughs> um, Raft is a survival adventure game that I've been playing for many years, and you start off on a, a two by two square raft. And a plastic hook. So it's just like two pieces of wood? Four pieces. Oh, it's, so two it's by like, two. it's two that way in it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And and you start with a plastic hook, and you got to throw the hook into the water and grab the materials, and then you can build the raft out from there with the materials you get, and then you can like go Can you down. grab fish? You can make a eat? fishing rod to eat, and you can... What, can your plastic hook grab the fish? No. No? you got to make a fishing rod. You actually have to make the fishing rod. Wow. And then you got to fight, make a wooden spear to fight off the shark that's trying to eat your boat and eat you. And then... Uh, trying to eat the wood? It's trying to get you in the water, so it's breaking your, your boat. It's a shitty shark. Yeah, it's kind of a bitch. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you know, it, you go to islands, and you there's like a, a story to follow, and you collect. You you end up like with smelteries and mining ore and all this cool stuff, and it's very very fun. And uh, Monday, the day that this comes out, is the release of the final chapter. Final chapter. So I'm excited to see where the story goes from from here after going to the city of Tangaroa. So, City of Tangare. Mm-hmm. So, we'll, we'll see what happens next. I'm very excited. It's a, it From what they've said, it is their biggest content update they've ever done for the game, too. Mm. So, there's going to be a lot of new stuff to do with the update, and I'm just really excited about it. It's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. if you like playing survival games with your friends, it is multiplayer, too. You don't have to play it alone. Someone's been trying to talk me into playing it. I I have been trying to talk Tyler into playing it with me. It's true. I'll probably do it soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, I suppose that'll bring us into our ability cooldown. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I have a slight announcement to make uh, in that for those who do go to the shop, you've probably known that I've been trying to sell magic cards of my own for a while because... And I didn't say this at the time because I wasn't out publicly, but I'm trying to use the money that I get from that to be able to buy new clothes for myself, to to build a new wardrobe so that I can start dressing the way I want to dress. So if you, uh, in the description below, uh, I have a few full decks sleeved that you can buy from me. I will post links to the lists in the description, and if you're interested, the uh, the prices are of course negotiable, and uh, the list price is in the description on tapped out for each of those decks, and I'll post them. And I've also got some singles for sale. Of course, the store does too, as always. But uh, if there's anything the store doesn't have that you're looking for, I might have it. Please feel free to ask me. And uh, I just, I appreciate it. It means the world to me. Yeah, so this is one of the few, you know, so I, I do allow people to sell singles in my store, especially like if we don't have the singles. Um, but this particular exception I'm making uh, for Ashland is, you know, even if we do happen to have it, um, you know, if you want to make a deal with Ashland and get it, I'm okay with it. Um, Again, it's just a special exception, so. And I appreciate that. Yeah. But thank you for watching. We love you. We love you all. We hope you stay happy, healthy, and safe. Don't forget to love each other. And uh, we'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. And uh, again, it's 
special uh, offer code is Pride Month. You got it, guys. Peace.